VRA for 3DS Max, Photon Mapping. Learn the efficient way of using Photon Mapping in VRA for 3DS Max. What is Photon Mapping? Photon Mapping is a technique for computing global illumination. Unlike Irradiance Map, which starts tracing rays from the camera, Photon Mapping traces rays from the lights in the scene. It is however advisable to use both Photon Map and the Irradiance Map for best results. See below settings that were proven reliable and works well in most cases. Initial settings. We will start with the following settings for the photon map. Note that these may be different from the defaults. Convert to irradiance map, off. Auto search distance, off. Max photons, zero. Convex null area estimate, off. Store direct light, on. Retrace threshold, zero. The only parameters that we will actually use are Max density, this defines the resolution or the spatial detail of the photon map. Lighting information from the photon map is accumulated at a number of points on the surfaces of seen objects. This parameter defines the distance, in world units, between those points. Smaller values mean that the points will be closer to each other and there will be more of them. Larger values mean that the light samples will be farther away from each other and there will be fewer of them. Obviously, this parameter depends on the scale of your scene. Changing this parameter requires recomputing of the photon map, since it is used only while the photon map is computed. Search distance, this defines how lighting will be reconstructed from the surface points described above. You may think of it as blurring of the photon map. It should be larger than max density, but the exact value depends on how blurry you want your photon map solution to be. Values of 2 to 5 times the value of max density work well. Changing this parameter does not require recomputation of the photon map since it is used only during rendering. Additional parameters that we will keep at the default values, but which you may change as needed are. Bounces, this controls the number of white bounces, you can set it to whatever value you want. More bounces mean slower computation of the photon map. We will keep this at 10, but you, you may adjust it as you want. Multiplier, this is a multiplier for the photon map, we will keep it at 1.0, but you may adjust it if you need. We have thus limited the parameters of the photon map that we'll use to just two, max density, and search distance. These are enough for controlling the photon map. Besides those settings, the quality of the photon map depends on the number of photons emitted from scene lights. More emitted photons mean a smoother and more accurate photon map. The number of light photons is controllable for each light from the light settings dialog, accessible from Vire's system rollout. Let's try it with a simple Cornell box. We'll demonstrate the effect of those two parameter on a simple Cornell box like scene. You can download the starting scene at the link provided in the description of this video. Please note that this example works with 3DS Max 5. It includes a very simple setup of a closed space with differently colored walls in a spotlight. The walls have VRA materials applied to them since currently photon mapping works only with VRA materials. Note that the spotlight has inverse square fall off and quite a high multiplier. This is because real world lights have inverse square fall off, and photon mapping produces inverse square fall off by default. Now, render the scene right away. This is what you get after rendering. Now turn on GI and set the photon map method for both primary and secondary bounces. Turn off auto search DIST, set max photons to 0, retrace threshold to 0, 0.0, and max density to 10.0. If you render, you should get this result, a bit dark, but this can be corrected by increasing secondary bounces multiplier, in the indirect illumination rollout, to 1.0. If you render again, you should get this. This renders quite fast, and it is quite a good approximation to the lighting in the scene. Obviously, it is far from being a good quality image, but we will get there eventually. Now go to the render dialog, and in the VRA system rollout, click the light settings button. In the dialog that opens, select the spotlight and set its diffuse subdivs parameter to 500. This controls the number of diffuse photons emitted by the light, not directly though. The actual number of photons is the square of this number, in this case, 250,000. Close the light settings dialog and render again. The photon tracing phase takes longer, but you can notice that the noise of the individual light samples is reduced, although the image is still splotchy.
we can reduce the splotchiness by increasing the search distance parameter. Set this to 40 and render again. The result is a lot smoother, although very blurry. Also notice the dark corners. Dark corners are not easy to avoid with this setup of the photon map, but the effect can be reduced to a great extent. Now set max density to 5.0 and search distance to 10.0. The effect of dark corners is reduced a lot, but the image is again noisy and splotchy. To decrease the noise, increase the diffuse subdivs for the light to 1500. The noise of the individual samples is reduced again. Now we could increase the search distance again to smooth the result, however we will do something else. We'll use the irradiance map to do the smoothing instead. In the indirect illumination rollout, set the first diffuse bounce method to irradiance map and choose the high irradiance map preset. If you render, you will get this. The Cornell box scene is a very easy scene for a global illumination algorithm, since there is very little occlusion, objects casting shadows and stopping the light.